Hey everyone, welcome back to yet another video. In this one, I've teamed up with the great people over at Clip Studio Paint, and I'm gonna be creating a 2D animation using their software. So let's get started. So I wanna make a 2D animated shot featuring a lot of characters and movement. A nice scenario I thought about could be to have them all exiting a train. And while animating that, I also get to explore the many features of Clip Studio Paint. But before we start animating anything, let's first establish the background so that we have a world to put our characters into. To aid me in this process of drawing a train, I modeled one in 3D using the software Cinema 4D. This makes it easier when composing my shot and when trying to find the right camera angle. I rendered that model from the 3D software with outlines only. This gave me a perfect reference I could now draw on top of in Clip Studio. My aim is to make this feel handmade and drawn, so getting rid of those perfectly sharp lines from the 3D render takes us there, and it still keeps the train in accurate perspective. Clip Studio is a brilliant software for both 2D animation, illustration and painting, and I really like to draw in this software. To draw these first lines I'm using a brush with a bit of a texture to simulate a graphite pencil. The brush is called real pencil if you want to use the same one. Clip Studio has a really great set of brushes that comes straight with the software. And people can create their own ones and share them, which creates a massive library for us to browse from. There are some really cool ones for painting that simulate traditional watercolor and oil brushes for example, so really useful stuff there. Now we have the line work established for the background. Let's begin with the real challenge of getting this place filled with some characters. I want my characters to be animals in human form, so I begin by sketching out a few designs on a separate canvas. Check out these neat time lapses here. Clip Studio automatically records your entire process, as long as you have enabled that feature in the menu. Really fun thing to be able to play back after you've created something. So if you intend to share your final artwork on social media, for example, it can be really cool to accompany it with a process breakdown like this one. I just wanted to warm up my drawing hand a bit before starting to populate the scene. I like this dog character here, so I'll start with him. Drawing a single frame of each character to begin with will inform me of their placement and give me a sense of how they might end up looking. I am thinking the train has just pulled into the station here and the different animals are stepping off. Now I'm character designing on the go here. This shot is not made for anything else than this video, but if this was for a bigger project, I would obviously be a bit more planned and prepared. Then we would have figured out what the characters look like before I dropped them into the scene. But it's quite fun when you can just kind of make things up as you go. This first frame of the characters I made sure to draw quite clean, so that I have a final look to aim towards. But then I keep things quite loose for the first pass of animation. Here I have started animating, and I absolutely love the timeline in the software. It really is a joy to work with, super easy to navigate and to organize my different animation folders. If you want to get your hands on the same software, then Clip Studio Paint offers a free trial, so check out the link in the description down below. For 2D animation, I have to draw every frame that makes up the animation, so for a fully animated shot with several characters in it, you will end up with a ton of individual drawings. To be able to animate, you use what's called animation folders, and you can make a new one by clicking this button here. Within this animation folder, I have all the frames for this dog character. I can move them around on the timeline and find where each frame fits best to create the best flow and motion. Adding a new drawing or keyframe is done by clicking this button here. 
and I can enable the onion skin which allows me to see the previous and following frames surrounding the one I'm currently drawing. The fact that they are colored actually helps quite a lot to determine which is before and which is after. This is still early days, but these frames are the keyframes that describe the action my dog character here is taking. I can later clean this up with more accurate line work and smooth it out with some in-between frames. But first, let's move on to some other characters. I'm eager to tackle something else. A family of badgers stepping off the train. When animating a character moving around, turning, taking steps, it's important to keep the feet grounded, for example, to make that feel realistic. I keep stepping away from the computer and actually acting it out myself to inform myself which foot takes the weight and whether the torso leans forward before the foot is lifted or how the arms swing or any details that will give character to the movement that I'm trying to portray. Whew. This is a lot of work. Not sure what I was expecting, to be honest. We got dogs, pigs, badgers. How about a frogman? Alright, happy days. I think it's time to draw some clean frames for each of these. Here you can see what the timeline currently looks like. We have an animation folder for each character, each with their individual spacing of frames. I'm working at 24 frames per second, but as you can see, some of the drawings here drag out over several frames. When cleaning up the animation, I just lower the opacity of the animation folder I want to work on and create a new one with matching blank frames above it. I do this before I in-between the animation, because for the in-betweens I kind of want to know what the final drawings need to look like. Or at least that will make things a lot more time efficient. Especially when the differences between the frames are not that significant, in-betweening the roughs is not really that useful. This process is not as mentally demanding as that first rough stage. The roughs are quicker to draw, but they need to describe the movement accurately, which I would say takes more of my attention and focus. That first rough pass is really what animation is about. It's like constructing the foundation, walls and roof of a building. This part here is more like uh, hoovering up the dust and painting the walls maybe. It is still challenging though and I need to make sure my characters stay somewhat consistent throughout the drawings here. This was definitely the most time consuming part. I could go over one more time and really tidy this up if I wanted to, but uh, the time we have here on the planet is limited and I feel it's ticking so let's be happy with this. I then moved on to coloring. This was honestly a struggle for me this time. I wanted to keep it quite simple without any shading, uh, to steer into that sort of children's book illustration vibe. But that was actually quite the challenge. I gave the background some colors, making the train carriage red. But that shot me in the foot later down the line when coloring the characters. The vibrant red was hard to compete with and took a lot of the attention, not allowing my characters to stand out and it made it hard to add warm matching colors to them without them being lost in that large red section. What I tried was to go for like other tones, maybe a bit more cooler tones, but honestly felt very uninspired quickly as there was no overall color palette I was happy with. It was a bit all over the place.
I felt like I had to do some drastic changes to it. I think the sky did not do too much for me here. Making that white as if it was just blank paper felt like the right thing to do. Changing the train color to a more muted green and warming up the trees to a more autumn tone gave it a very different look. The coloring of the characters did take quite some time to do initially, but to change the color afterwards is really quite quick with the bucket tool. I just go through the frames and tap on each area I want changed. Having the outlines as a layer on top hides a lot of the funky edges that otherwise an approach like this might result in. Do you think this was the right decision in the end? Let me know in the comments. It gave the whole thing a bit of a warmer look. I, at least I felt better about it this way. It can honestly be devastating when you work on something time consuming to suddenly realize you don't really like the result of it. Defeating and maybe disappointing, but the best thing to do is to step back, analyze it, maybe ask someone for their honest opinion on it. Uh, also to keep working on it and try to solve the things you don't like really is the only way forward. Making art is a constant exercise of problem solving. If you want to see more videos and tutorials, then do check out my Patreon page. There are plenty of videos over there that you will not find anywhere else. Also, make sure to follow the link in the description to check out Clip Studio Paint. Have you used it before? Is this maybe the software you're animating with right now? Let me know. Massive thanks to Clip Studio for sponsoring this video. And also big thanks to all my Patreons who are supporting this channel. Now, if you're interested in similar content to this, then do check out my older videos about Clip Studio Paint. I'll leave a link for those as well below. Now help me out and subscribe to this channel so that we can make more content like this. It's your support that makes this possible. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.